It's like, okay, yeah, like double blade dance this, and then, hey, guess what? You got a whole board of clowns? Deal with that, guess what? Whole board of clowns? Deal with that, guess what? McGurgle Prime, hey, guess what? Deal with that. Yashiraj, two more full boards of clowns. Deal with that? Maybe I still got some tip to scales value in the deck. I don't know. Can you deal with 47 straight boards? No. That's why this is the most broken deck in Hearthstone right now. Hey, buddy, watch this. So, folks, uh, this is the return of Barnes, but in a very different format. Uh, this is Ramp Paladin, and yeah, there's a deck list on screen already. What's what's going on? Well, uh, I really wanted to get this one to you ASAP, but I'm not streaming right now. I'm just recording this video because this right here behind me or next to me is the best deck in Hearthstone, and I'm not saying that as like a meme, you know, clickbait sort of thing like many YouTubers are wont to do, but it, it's actually literally the best deck in Hearthstone. Uh, this is the data right here from HS Replay over the last day, Diamond Through Legend. It is standing alone pretty firmly at tier one. So of course I wanted to showcase this one and uh, we'll just play a few games, win or lose. Um, the deck stands on its own. It doesn't need my gameplay to support it. But the idea with this deck is basically uh, ramping and cheating out stuff via High Abyss Allura. You get guaranteed spells uh, off Wand Maker, which means you have only one other spell in your deck, which is Tip the Scales, which means if you have an Allura and a Wand Maker, you can play uh, Tip the Scales very, very early in the game. Same could be said for Coin as well. Uh, you don't even need the Wand Maker in that case, just Coin away. And the rest of the deck is basically a bunch of super greedy stuff that you can also play if you hit the Nas Dormu early. That's going to push you to 10 mana. You use your 10 mana cards to stabilize off crazy stuff like Carnival Clowns, Yasharaj, grinding out virtually anybody for value. And then you got all these Murlocs for early game consistency if you need it, but also they have that power spike off tip the scales and you got some life gain, survivability stuff. Crab Rider's amazing in this deck. So uh, it just kind of all came together as this like super Barnes replacement with Allura into tip the scales and Nazdormu into whatever next giant thing you play on the following turn. And it becomes a monster of a deck that is shockingly consistent with scary win rates for things like Allura played early. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, jump into some games here for the Ramp Paladin. And sorry for the format change. I just didn't want you guys to miss out on the hot new thing that I suspect might actually get nerfed just because those mulligan win rates for High Abyss Allura are just completely bonkers. I should also update you guys on my knee and I don't even have my head headphones on. Uh, if some of you heard I had some knee issues this week, um, uh, had to go to the doctor finally. It's just not getting any better and got a steroid shot in my butt. There's going to be some fanfic about that and, uh, <laughs> and got some, uh, some painkillers and some diagnostic tests run to figure out what the heck's wrong. And, uh, basically long story short, we're sorting it out. So, uh, apologize for not streaming as much the last few days i've kind of been in agonizing pain and barely sleeping but uh as of right now i feel fantastic because i'm roided out i literally roided out so um hopefully uh that continues to be the case and we get back into a regular uh, swing of things all right so cool great opener here for curve doesn't really matter when we play the wand maker uh, I didn't actually hard mulligan for High Abyss Allura, which is a debatable strategy. It might actually be worth it because their win rate's just so obscene. Uh, I thought, you know, Armor Avenger's such a great early consistent play. And as is Underlight Angling Rod and answering the sort of things uh, Rogue is want to do that it felt uh, a little greedy in this case to push for the Allura. Because what could end up happening is you hit, you know, full 10 drops instead. And Rogue is such a pushy deck. I don't want to take that risk just yet. Uh, that said, um... Interesting hand. Wave of Apathy is a nice little stall. Got some removal fishy. I think this is looking pretty solid, actually. So Nazoth in this deck, if you look carefully, crazy results, right? Of course, you got a ton of Murlocs. That should be pretty apparent. Uh, you got Circus Amalgams in here, which are great off of Tip the Scales, of course, because they're big taunt bodies, uh, but also fill your Nazoth pool, which is awesome. You got a Dark Moon Rabbit and Scrapyard Colossus also tossed in, and then Nazdormu. Uh, kind of a rogue dragon that might seem inconsistent but you got red scale dragon tamers to help you pull them even more consistently so there's just like a million things going on in this deck and uh they all work out just shockingly well to get you all your crazy big stuff asap so that's why it's winning so much and like yes sometimes decks like this are a feast or famine 
You might have a game where you just hit a dead hand and you lose instantly, but you're still going to win a lot of the time otherwise. So it's not as if um, your efforts are, are lost. You're still netting many, many more wins than you're losing, which is why the win percentage, of course, is very, very high. And uh, you will say the one thing this deck is not super uh, keen on is life gain. So uh, other than the armor vendors, not a lot of ways to gain life. You can certainly stabilize by taunts very nicely because there's a ton of those, but you're not like recovering life if you lose it. So you do have to be kind of careful not to take too much damage that your opponent can't just burst you down, which I suspect will end up really being a weakness for this deck in the long run as well. But I haven't played it enough personally to say that just yet. Okay, this might actually be a pretty decent wave of apathy just given the fact that um, there are gonna be so few big wide boards where it connects. So I can do something like wave, circus amalgam for five mana, maybe broom, attack with a weapon first to see. Um, to see if we wanna broom one of these Murlocs instead. And, uh, I mean, I can, but I don't really want to use coins. So we'll probably just dump the uh, Sphere of Sapiens instead here. And this is a great way to help you find uh, all that other stuff you care about as well, right? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I didn't get to kill this off. Right? I guess I could have technically and tried to buff this, but I don't think it's really that valuable. Uh, we don't have any other dragons in hand, but it's just not that big a deal. Rather play for the good turns. And we're keeping coin here, of course, to uh, cheat into one of our 10 drops a little bit earlier if we can. Because, of course, uh, we want to play in this on. Yay. And, you know, we've kept up, like, head-to-head -head right now. Despite not having any of our power plays, which is a good sign. When a deck like this that has crazy plays can still compete when it's not hitting those crazy plays, that's good. And that's because of all these early Murlocs, right? They're just providing a lot of consistency in the early game. Not to mention a nice wave of apathy to save us a couple points of health. So, a Consecration here would be good, but you can't run Consecration. You want your only spell to be Tip the Scales. Don't forget, that's very vital to a deck like this succeeding. So if you try to tech it, give it more like stuff, you want to run a snack run for some heals, those sorts of things, it's going to ruin your deck. So you got to be careful. Don't ruin your deck. I need a play. Give me a play. Uh, that's not a play, so let's look for a new fate. That's not really much of a play either, to be honest. Um, yeah, this sucks, guys. This is a bad turn. This might be where things could go south for us, honestly. Should have officially in first, obviously. Because anyway. we're just leaving a ton of damage out on board. Now, I can coin it as off next turn, which is going to have uh, you know, some of our random garbage Murlocs and a... Circus Amalgam, so I can get a little bit of a taunt, but it's not a great one, right? It's not, it's not the taunt you're looking for. I might need more. So this is just a hammering here. Oh, that's, that exposes us to a lot of over-the-top damage. Now, thankfully, that said, they've already used double of his rate, so that does potentially help a lot. What do I need here? I would love, like, a Scrapyard Colossus just to get it in the Ooh, uh, we can work with this. This is fine. These don't need to be corrupted. Um, well, actually, let's think about that for a second. Can I get by with an Azoth here? I have an Amalgam. Hopefully a Fishy Flyer, best case, but that's it. Nothing else. The Amalgam is kind of risky, but it corrupts the Clowns so that I can get two runs of Clowns in a row off Yasharaj. I don't, I don't think that's necessary against Rogue. I think we can get by. Um, these still deny it just so much because in particular that weapon's really strong right now. So if I shut down this final charge of the weapon with these four fours, I think that will ultimately net us the most amount of health. Uh, they've already Secret Passage twice. They've already Eviscerated twice. So they kind of look like they might be light on stuff to do soon, which is obviously great news. And indeed we deny the weapon. That's awesome. Another sword is really solid, but it takes a while. And frankly, they're already getting kind of uh, low. Hmm. This could allow us to greed rather nicely. Because uh, now we get two Amalgams in our Nazoth, which makes the Nazoth 
much, much higher impact. We're going to go ahead and overwrite this to push damage face, because if he's using that weapon to attack into my multiple waves of taunts, I think we could stabilize really well. Ooh, this is also just a ton of damage. <laughs> this might just be lethal. Because uh, he's going to hit this. Uh, go to 12. I have 6, 7, 10, and this is another 6 on these three Murlocs. So, more than enough to kill him. And indeed, look at that. We didn't even hit any of our power plays and still just wrecked a rogue. That's fantastic news. I think we could even see a concede here. I think they might know the writing's on the wall. They don't know I have a Murloc War Leader, but they might just realize that the, the pace of this just doesn't pan out for them. Cool. Great game. This deck's nuts. Fail state, still owned. <laughs> well, I don't know about all but stabilized anyway. By the way, I'm sure I'm going to make some misplays here, guys. It's uh, currently 6, 12 a.m. my time. I'm drugged out of my mind, <laughs> literally, on painkillers for my knee. And uh, no, no Twitch chat here to keep me in check. So my apologies if things don't happen perfectly. But I think you'll bear with me. Also, my hair is a mess because it's been a while since I tended to it. Okay, Crab Rider, really nice reactive card. I think this is an instance against where we really could hard mulligan for our power plays. I think we look for Nas Dorma and we look for um, Allura. And even Red Scale Dragon Tamer just go a long way. I hope I didn't pass Red Scale Dragon Tamer in the mulligan last time. I don't think I did. I wasn't really paying close attention to that synergy just yet because it always hits your Nas Dormu. But uh, it's a possibility I missed that last game. Let me know in the comments if I did. And if I didn't, Drop a subscribe, because you know you love this channel. The sweet, sultry, late night sounds of Regis Gildan. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, we definitely don't worry about armor, because we're trying to grind this out. This is a value matchup, probably. Um, We care about our own armor, because this could be like ATC stuff, maybe. It would be one way to beat us if they can pull that together before we really start to swarm. Point is good if we can hit an Allura. It'd be kind of sad to put this video out without actually playing an Allura, but I will. <laughs> if we don't, we don't. So be it again. This is more about just getting the list in your guys' mind so you can farm some ranks before this one gets nerfed. I think it. I think it's very legitimately possibly going to get nerfed. And by the way, this is not a new idea, right? If you look at this, this all existed before. This is a deck we actually played on the channel, I think, or... Talked about a lot. I, I seem to remember maybe No Hands had a version of this. I'm not really sure. I don't remember the origination. So you might be asking, like, why is this so good now? Well, two things changed, or a few things changed, right? Armor Vendor, amazing early game minion. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Um, amazing early game minion. I don't actually know the right way to do this. If this dies, I lose damage. If either dies, I lose damage, I guess. Um. Armor Vendor, great early game. Damage Denial, so great way to keep this deck alive for longer. Crab Rider, fantastic Murloc to give you more reactivity off of your Tip the Scales. You don't just die the turn you play Tip the Scales. That's a big deal. Um, and uh, oh, Red Scale Dragon Tamer, although not exactly new right now, just hits that Nas Dormu more consistently, which is a big deal. So a handful of things that uh, went a long way towards making this succeed. And hey, look, we're going to get to do the thing. Hopefully we can get a fishy flyer to trade in here. Oh, or or this. <laughs> that works too. Alright, so that's turn four, guys. I summoned I don't even want to count. 16, uh, 22 and 5 is 27. 33 and 5 is 38 attack, and I don't even care about the whatever random amount of, <laughs> of health do. I don't know. Some some amount less than that, I think, but. You, you tell me tell me in the comments how much health is that too lazy to count twice yeah i know install the hs replay thing that counts the oh my gosh look at this i don't want to install the hs replay thing i want to have to count i guess i want my life in arsenal to be easy but not that easy <laughs> let's trivialize it that much counting feels so fundamental so yeah that's why uh allura has an 85 percent mulligan win rate right now in the stack because nobody can survive a 30, what did I say, 38 damage? It's like a Battlegrounds board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are 
are you supposed to do? This is completely doomed. All right, uh, again, yeah, let's start Mulligan. See if we can get an Asdormu opener maybe this time. <coughs> All right, Severe Sapiens is probably really, really good on one, even over the Armor Vendor, unless maybe there's a minion to contest because I really want to be able to um, get as many shots extra at finding these key cards as possible. He might have an ooze, I guess. He knows the deck. He's probably frustrated because I think we'll all be frustrated by this eventually, to be honest with you. Uh, I think this deck will probably drive all of us mad before long. Because uh, it's Barnes. It's the return of Barnes. It's basically Big Priest. You're cheating out crazy big plays on turn four um, or soon thereafter that shouldn't be possible. So uh, I, I think it'll get adjusted. I think uh, Allura... Might get nerfed. She was already good anyway, right? Like, she was already a good card just naturally in Librams. I think it might say cast a spell from your deck that's five mana or less or something. I don't know. what you know, Whatever kind of fix, but you definitely see that happening. Okay. Good minion. Um, I definitely, like, want to respect that, but I don't want to give it four damage right away by training in my dudes. No Allura yet. Also, no one maker to go with it, so... Without coin, it doesn't actually matter if I hit an Allura just yet. But uh, Nazorm is what we're looking for this time, I think. Huh, okay, no support for that. Hmm. Could take a rod, or I could be super greedy. Oh, I'm too greedy. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> greed is not panning out. <laughs> this might be good though to showcase the weaknesses of this deck when it doesn't work. It may not work. But really, I'm looking for a few cards Red Scale, um, Allura, Nazormu. Honestly, even a Wandmaker, I guess, at this point, is reasonably valuable. I'm getting murdered right now though. Man. I have literally nothing to play. I think I gotta stop being so greedy with the sphere. I think we're learning a lesson right now about this deck. Passed up a lot of good tempo plays. Oh, it's just not it right now, though. Uh-oh. Another rod. Well, at least it's well-timed. I don't actually think resources are as scary to me here as damage output because I can beat resources by just stacking up crazy threats, right? Just playing a million things. I don't know if I can beat just a, an overwhelming board presence, right? A board that, that swarms me might not give me time to play these. If they have cards, they still have to spend the mana, so uh, it'll take them a while to get enough cards to spend enough mana. So that gives me time to do my things, right? And frankly, right now they're not even drawing anyway, so that's a, a great uh, calculus for us at the moment. That curve favors us pretty notably. <gasps> Oh my god, Allura, but no freaking spells. And I, 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 I don't think I can tempo her, unfortunately. Might have to, though. Oh, this is nice. Okay, never mind. I got a good on curve body, so it's not great, but it's it's playable at least. Um, so that saves me that. But I, I, I mean, half my deck's still dead draw off the top. I still have three, four... Uh, six, seven dead draws out of 22, so a third of the deck's dead. What would be good here? I mean, Wandmaker is definitely the OP draw. No question. I actually can't trade this off right now, though, so I would lose a spot of efficiency, and I'm almost dead, so. This is exactly this deck's weakness. I'm glad we're seeing it in action. Oh, these are dead. Oh, I can't trade these off either, so actually Wandmaker wouldn't even be that good. Yeah, this is game. Cool to see the, the weakness here. Bad, dead, unplayable hands. Uh, didn't hit our key mulligans. Didn't even hit anything off Serious Sapiens. But I think I greeted a little bit. Like, in hindsight, um, we probably should have just taken some tempo plays. I was hoping to swing really, really hard. But that's, that's a lesson learned when you play this. Don't get too greedy. Let it unfold naturally, right? Let your greed, let your greed come natural. <laughs> don't, don't dig deep inside yourself. Digging deep. Deep down in there to get that greed. The greed reaches. Get it. Dig deep. Deep down in there. 
you know, I'm like not gonna have to edit this video at all because I've basically been talking nonstop, which is great because I don't have time. I want to get it out ASAP. So uh, enjoy any dead air, YouTube. You're just here for the deck list anyway. <laughs> Demon Hunter. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So Juan makes a good piece to keep. Um, let's greed the rest. Actually, this is enough to kind of get us started. And if we hit, you know, Laura, that's just bonkers. Okay. This is. Okay, I need to read the mulligan guide on this deck because <laughs> this doesn't feel right against Demon Hunter. I think I'm being too greedy still. Um, the question you kind of have to ask is, right, it's like, do the chances to hit an Allura increase your win rate so much that you're willing to sacrifice solid mulligan win rate cards? So, for instance, right, like, Murger is a 54% mulligan win rate card, but Allura is a 78. So basically that's a 24% gain if you push for the Allura. But you know, Allura is only one out of 25 remaining cards, so that's a you know 4% chance. 4% of 24, probably not worth it. Oh my god. Okay, so this is turn five. Um, actually, I will have to give this to one of their minions, though. This is not a great one mana spell for us. <sighs> Shoot, really, any like secret would have been better. I mean, it's it's worth it. I mean, it's absolutely worth it. There's no question that I'll do it. It's just not ideal. Um, I by playing this, I actually risk this not going off. Um, if he trades in the minion. I think that's pretty unlikely. I think this minion will often live, but there is a world where this completely ruins my game plan. I, I, I don't know if this is worth it, actually. I, I already regret this. I already regret this. Is he going to hero power or trade? Oh, he's hero powering. Oh, my God. Yes. I actually think this is wrong. I don't think the 4 or 5 is worth risking losing your Allura because this play is so powerful. And I have no other way to damage a minion. So it worked out, honestly, perfectly for us, but... Um, I don't think we should have made that play. I think that's a bad play. Has to be a damaged minion, right? So I have to buff his. Now, hopefully I can kill it without, like, feeling too bad about this. I mean, I actually feel pretty bad about this. I think it's... Is it right? It's probably right, because he can hit the war leader. Um, Let's think about our follow-up plays. We have another war leader, though. You know what, actually, um, let's just chill. I'm not gonna kill it. So he goes here, he takes six, he trades into the war leader. But we have the second war leader for follow-up damage. And this in particular is an insane amount of damage. Well, this is two really, I guess they're both six. Um Okay, so yeah, that's broken. <laughs> Needless to say, that's that's a broken turn. I don't want this in the game. Blizzard, please. <laughs> Blizzard, please. There might be a um, Blade Dance here. Uh, depending on what it hit, could be pretty sick. It seems like a Soul Shear, yeah. Okay. So he's going to kill probably the Wind Fury guy instead here. Because I think you got to kill stuff, don't you? Um, oh, Blade the Ladies are really nice. There's a lot of stuff happening here. Wow. Okay. That's kind of fine because it popped the shield anyway. Hitting the Allura for me. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this could have been way worse. Okay. Can live with this. Do I turn <laughs> turn the corner face? <laughs> I don't think so, right? I think we have to trade. Um, this hits me a Nas, <clears throat> which helps a lot. So, actually, my God, should I have done that now? Oh, I think this was wrong. I don't mind this play, but I, I think I actually should just play the Nas now. I think that was wrong. I think I had four mana perfectly for it, and then I would have been dumping these ASAP. Um, yeah, I think that was wrong. Learning, learning all along the way. Learning, learning, learning every day. Could have also traded this into play the four mana one as well, but I don't play a war leader and that dude, so. I mean, this is a fine play. I'm freaking out, but nothing wrong with this play. I can still play Nods this turn. Um, okay, would love to draw an Underlight Angling Rod right here. Please, 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 please. I don't think giving them 10 mana is a huge concern. They're already going to be at 7 anyway. So, I mean, it's an 8-8 on board. I'm following it up with tons of stuff. I have 28 freaking health. 
a uh, Nazoth is already going to be bonkers because I have a uh, Nas and double Circus Amalgams. Um, I might just play that now and then follow it up with Clowns and just say screw it. Like, I don't even need these in here, right? This is almost too greedy. Well, wow, that's a lot of those. I might have to play a rabbit. Um, I could maybe have to play a rabbit here, guys. Can I get by with just a scrapyard and like read this out like crazy? I mean, if I rabbit, this dies on board, which isn't a problem. I mean, a silence would be kind of terrifying because I wouldn't be able to kill it off again. I'm just gonna rabbit. This is insane. I can't believe I'm actually rabbiting. I'm just leaving four damage up, so it's not that scary. And then Nazoth gives me a clear on board, two taunts, and eight eight. Um, again, I, I could greed the scrapyard, but it just seems so greedy. I don't need it. And now my clowns are active too, so these are just a wall. I, mean, I may just play this next turn. Th this is so crazy that you just have a gluttony of possible ways to own people. Just pick your poison. <laughs> it's just crazy how much you can just own everybody. I think it's this, right? It's not even that exposed to like blub double bleed dance, like kind of. <gasps> oh my god, I wish I could burn that. I can just clear the board with the Zoth though, so I'm just gonna take this. Just to remove any risk of doubt. We can do this next turn. It's just, it's just ridiculous, right? Just ridiculous. Hey, I got a harmless little bunny achievement. Nice. It's like, okay, yeah, like double blade dance this, and then, hey, guess what? You got a whole board of clowns? Deal with that, guess what? Whole board of clowns, uh, deal with that, guess what? Scrapyard Colossus, deal with that, hey, guess what? Scrapyard Colossus, hey, deal with that, guess what? McGurgle Prime, hey, guess what? Deal with that, Yashiraj, two more full boards of clowns. Deal with that, maybe I still got some tip to scales value in the deck, I don't know. Can you deal with 47 straight boards? No, that's why this is the most broken deck in Hearthstone right now. He actually had double blade dance. It's coming true. The prophecy is being fulfilled. <laughs> it's just so stupidly greedy. <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh, this deck is actually insanely, insanely stupidly, stupidly overpowered right now, I feel like. Highest win rate in the game. Unbelievable high mulligan win rate cards sometimes. I need enough, dude. I'm so sorry to do this to you. I feel guilty, honestly. It sucks. Shouldn't have to do this. Oh, is that enough actually to stabilize? I think they're alive, right? I only have six times four is 24, 27? Really? Does this hit a lethal lever? Uh, yeah, Blessing of Might. You don't pick the wise. <laughs> Just for memes, yeah. Why not? Okay, 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 okay. Actually, let's just trade one in. For the heck of it, why not? Uh, then I can Spectral as well. Get more bodies up. I mean, there's, we're not losing from here. Double Blade Dance. I mean, I guess I came into, like, some obscene amount of damage, but he only has three cards in hand. He had skull plus like cane stuff. It would be technically possible. Such a beautiful Not enough. Not enough. I mean, it feels good to be Demon Hunter always, right? But it doesn't feel good doing it like this. Frankly, this still sucks. Like, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be uh, the reason this happens. All right, why not? Nah, clowns get the kill always. Okay. That's it, I think, guys. That's 30 minutes there, it looks like, on this recording. Maybe maybe a little less if I took two takes at the beginning. I can't remember. But uh, that's this is crazy strong. I mean, enjoy it while it lasts. I think this will get nerfed. Anytime there's, like, crazy, crazy high mulligan win rate cards that are at the top of the meta, Blizzard usually addresses those, and it feels like this one's just so spiky. Um, if it doesn't get addressed, then what's going to happen is the meta is going to go hyper, hyper aggro to counter people playing this. Um because it's not probably as good against aggro. If you look at its matchups, like aggro demon hunter is not great. That was soul fragment demon hunter, thankfully. Uh, some decks that just go super, super fast. 
particularly if they don't care about taunts, uh, we'll probably be able to take this down some. But it, looking at the matchups, it really doesn't have that many bad ones. So anyway, enjoy this one. Thanks for hanging out and watching. As always, appreciate that. Uh, tell me what you think about this crazy deck. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And until next time, game over.